Hi guys, welcome to the Headphone Show. For today's video, I have a review of the hi fi Man Sundara. This is a planar magnetic over-ear open-back headphone that comes in right at around $350. So let's take a look. This review unit was sourced through headphones.com. I'll leave a link to the product page as well as the community forum section where you can see what everybody else is saying about this as well. So last year, right around July and August, I was able to review the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. I got onto one of the loaner programs through Hi-Fi Man and they actually sent me two units. So I put it through its paces extensively and found that I really liked the headphone. It had a few minor issues, like for example, a little bit of bass roll off, and then a little bit of upper mid-range shout, but for the most part, it was what I considered to be a benchmark at the $350 price range. And now, for the past couple of weeks, I've been hearing rumors of a few stealth revisions that have been happening to some of the hi fi Man headphones, including the Sundara, the Ananda, and the Aria. If you're wondering what a stealth revision is, often manufacturers will make small tweaks in the manufacturing process, either to incorporate customer feedback, or in some cases, because it's cheaper and easier to do, uh, makes it a little bit more efficient to produce. Uh, and they don't always tell us, and a lot of the time, whatever changes get made aren't made public because they're not releasing version two of the same headphone or version three or whatever it ends up being. Now with the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, there have been some stealth revisions. So to begin with, let's talk about build quality, design and comfort. And this is one of the areas where the stealth revision shows up. The first thing that I noticed when I first took this out of the box was that yes, this is the same fairly sturdy and solid design from Hi-Fi Man that's an improvement on the older HE400i series and even the HE500 uh, series with really solid feeling yokes and there's a bit of, there's tilt here and unfortunately there's no swivel to the sides. And that was my biggest complaint with the previous Sundara that I'd reviewed was that there was no swivel and that made it not particularly comfortable and it clamped inwards on my jaw. And so while I was specifically looking for swivel and hoping that that would be the stealth revision, I was disappointed to see that that's not the case. But they did find a way to make it more comfortable. So the stealth revision, at least from what I can tell, is in the pads. While the pads look the same as the previous version, this is the focus pad design with perforations on the inside here. The material for the outside is not as sturdy feeling. It feels a little bit more flimsy, a little bit not quite as solid. But at the same time, the front part here is also thinner. So it feels like the angle is more extreme. And this means that when you put it on your head, it doesn't clamp in at the jaw or at the top of the jaw here as strongly, as severely. And ultimately, that means that my previous issues of it not having any cup swivel are no longer a big deal. They haven't really changed the overall idea behind the pad. This is the same, this material here feels the same. But I mean, even if you just look at pictures of this front part where the most extreme part of the angle is, where the narrowest part of the angle is for the pads, you'll, you'll notice that it's considerably thinner on this unit. Let's see if I put this together than it is on previous units. Obviously for performance, this is the same as it was before. This is exceptionally well detailed for the price. You get incredible instrument separation and structural definition for the images. I'm consistently blown away with how good this performs for the price that it comes in at. And I don't think there's any other headphone that's around this price point that even comes close to this. The slam and punch on this is surprisingly good and considerably better than most planars that I've heard, even that cost quite a bit more money than this. This slams harder than planars that cost $2,000. So I don't know <laughs> what it is about the design here that allows it to do this. It might just have something to do with the implementation of a driver of this specific driver. The one area where the Sundara is not the top of the class is in soundstage. You can definitely find headphones around this price that have a more spacious soundstage. But at the same time, this is better than the LCD-1, considerably better than the LCD-1 for soundstage. It's better than all of those Sennheiser HD 6X whatever, including the 660S. 
It's just a little bit behind the something like the DT1990 Pro, and it's behind this is the, the Virum 1, which is also a planar. This has a more spacious soundstage than the Sundara. But still, soundstage isn't a specific weak point for the Sundara. It's just that it doesn't outshine the competition as strongly as the rest of its performing categories do. All right, let's talk about the tonality and the frequency response, because that's where the other stealth revision shows up. And part of me feels like the change to the frequency response is just a result of the change to the pads. What ended up happening is the issues that I had with the previous iteration of this have both been completely fixed. The bass extension is way better on this new unit, so it extends way further into the bass, all the way to 30 hertz, and then the upper mid-range shout that I kept hearing is completely gone. So for me, this is almost the ideal tonality. This is almost a perfect linear frequency response, or what I might consider to be a perfect linear frequency response. And certainly it measures extremely well, both on the HEQ compensation and the HPN compensation, which remember the mini DSP ears rig is not an, an industry standard or accurate, accurate measurement system. But at least you can see how this measures differently and markedly better than the previous units that I had reviewed. And so that once again indicates to me that this stealth revision here may have been intentional. It may have been deliberate. And the result is that this is now a better headphone, yes, even than the benchmark that I thought it was. This is now even better than that previous unit that I'd reviewed. And for anybody who owns one of these and you're like, well, I wish that I had known that and gotten this revision, uh, I think you, you'll probably be okay if you just end up finding pads like this. Now with that said, it's not a huge change in the frequency response and all the other good things about the Sundara's frequency response are still there. And so you get a mid-range that isn't particularly withdrawn or recessed. It's, it's a fairly, again, neutral mid-range depending on how you define neutral. And then the treble is fantastically well balanced here. And what I mean by that is that relative to a compensation that's based on something like the Harman target, there's a relatively counterclockwise tilt to it, but it's not overdone. It's very close. And at the same time, there's enough energy there to make things interesting. So it's not this softer and withdrawn and relaxed presentation with a warm bass shelf or anything like that. This is a much more forward and analytic headphone, but it's not fatiguing with over sharpening in the consonant range. Your S's and T's and F's this is some of the best presentation of the consonant range I've ever heard. It's all extremely detailed, extremely resolving, and it's you don't hear any etch or grain. There's no problems there whatsoever. The only issue with the treble, if there is any at all, and really this is like the most nitpick thing I can possibly think of, because I'm trying to be as critical as I can here, and it's challenging to do when something as good as this shows up. The only thing that I could nitpick with the treble is that the air qualities uh, above 11k hertz are not quite as emphasized and present as they are with the Odyssey LCD-1. All right, so let's compare the Hyphen Sundara to other headphones around its price point. And this again comes in right at around $350 as does the Virum 1 here, and the Odyssey LCD 1 is $400. Amongst these mid-level planars, yeah, the Hi-Fi Man Sundara is absolutely my favorite. The Virum 1 has a more spacious soundstage, for sure, and it has really good tonal balance for most of its frequency response. But the treble for the Virum 1 is a bit splashy, it's a little bit etched, the tonal balance is just not quite right in the treble. Uh, and that's with both the leather pads here, and I also used the suede pads to try that. With the suede pads, it's way worse. Uh, and with leather pads, it's much more where I'd want it to be. And then I also find that the Virum 1 at the upper range for the treble, it, it does roll off a little bit, or it's a little bit you know, pulled back, withdrawn. And while I can understand why some people might like that, to me, the tonal balance for this, it just, your cymbals and percussive instruments crash through so much nicer. And then similarly with the LCD-1, and perhaps even better depending on which area of the treble you value more, the, the everything about the treble with this is also fantastic. But the main drawback with the LCD-1 is that its technical performance just isn't on the same level as the Hi-Fi Men's Sundara. For everything from detail to speed to punch and dynamics to soundstage, imaging, everything about the Sundara is just 
categorically better. And that's even when you do use the reveal plus here. And of course, I don't think we should be surprised by that because look at how this look at how different the size is for these, right? So this is I mean these are totally different things. And my experience of using them for the sound quality has lined up exactly with what I think we should expect. So this new revision obviously takes the Haifa Mensandara to the next level. It's it was already fantastic, but comparing this to these two headphones uh, this is the clear winner. But when you compare this to other headphones, I really struggle to think of anything under $700 that I would rather have than the Haifa Men Sandara. I know some of you guys are going to ask about how this compares to the Bayer Dynamic DT1990 Pro. And I've seen some videos out there where people are saying, ah, maybe that would be their pick. But no, unless it's specifically for studio use, uh, this is just so much better for actually listening to music. It's better for just about every performance category except for soundstage. So the instrument separation, structural definition for images, surgical precision, detail. And I know some of you guys are going to be thrown off by that, but I struggle to think that that headphone's reputation for being highly detailed is for any other reason other than the massive 8.5 kHz peak in the consonant range where the S's, F's, and T's are that over sharpen that range. So it should be obvious by now that I absolutely love this headphone and it's at the point where I would I'm I would really like to buy it and maybe I will. And in my mind this especially this new revision when whenever this happened where the where they changed the pads or what it, when they changed the material a little bit uh, for the frequency response that this has coupled with its already excellent technical performance this needs to be considered the new value benchmark the same way that the HD6XX was at you know $220 or whatever it is right now. For the longest time it was like you buy that headphone because it's better than everything else under $500 and now I think that's the Sundara and it probably even is better than stuff that costs a lot more than that. So yeah, I have absolutely no reservation about recommending the Haifa Men Sundara. If this revision is any indication of what the other ones have had, uh, you know, I need to evaluate those first, but there's a very good chance that I end up buying this as well because this needs to be the thing that other headphones, especially at this price range or under $700 or $500 or whatever, everything else needs to be evaluated against this. The one thing to still keep in mind is that this is still Hi-Fi Man and so the build quality question is still valid. We don't know how well this is going to do a year from now. We don't know how well this is going to last. Who knows how reliable the drivers are in here, but based on the way that everything else feels here, I think this is a solid step up from the previous Hi-Fi Man headphones that constantly failed. I don't really think that there's as much to worry about with something like this. So yeah, if you were trying to find the best value, the best bang for the buck headphone available right now, my money is on the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. I don't think that there's anything that outperforms its competition to the degree that this does for the range of competition that it does. I do also have to mention that this does require a bit more power than something like the LCD One. Not as much as the Virum one, but I would not uh, use this without an amplifier. I think that's it's a requirement. All right, that does it for this review. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one.